just wanted to talk a little bit about setbacks. So setbacks, we have them in life, we have them in business, and it's totally normal. We're all human at the end of the day. And this whole idea of having to do something perfectly the first time, and that being the only right thing, is really ridiculous, actually, when you think about it. I want to talk about a couple of businesses that I've run in the past that did well, but then didn't do well. So first of all, so obviously I run a jewelry business now, but before that, I've been an entrepreneur basically since I was five years old, creating little things, selling them at the market. I really love that whole like commerce thing, creating something and selling it. It's usually like that for me, that I create and then I sell something. And that's ranged from like artworks to clothing to you know, all kinds of different things along the way in different shapes and forms of it being a business to some degree or just a hobby and then selling it at you know like the yearly market in the next town and so first of all my the first business that i had was a clothing business so i redesigned secondhand clothes and i basically went to charity shops, found things, chopped them up, sewed them into something that looked better. That basically I just saw fabric that had potential and was like, okay, I can turn this into something else. So then I created a whole brand of clothing. It was called Yesterday Once Off Reinvented Clothing. Quite the mouthful, right? <laughs> so in the end, I just called it Yesterday. And I ran that for, I would say, probably two, three years, maybe. No, actually probably more than that. It was more like four years that I ran that business and I lived off that business. So this was my first proper, proper business that I would say it's actually a business. And it was great. It worked really well. I used to sell at markets. I used to stock lots of boutiques around Cape Town, it's a really popular area around Long Street. And this was really good. And I would say like what helped me get there was one, having a friend that helped me helped motivate me. So she was doing jewelry. Funnily enough, she didn't actually, she studied fashion design, which is funny. And I actually had a, yeah, like different background. So anyway, I was in clothing and she was in jewelry. So she made like assembled pieces, her and her partner, but then we would motivate each other. So we'd go over to each other's houses all the time and like multiple times a week, plan the next step of our business because we were kind of on the same stage of our journey. So we're like, right, let's go and connect with shops. Let's go and find people to stock us. Let's approach that particular market. You know, so it was a lot of moral support, which I think goes a long way because if you're just trying to do everything yourself, often you're like, oh, I don't know. You kind of like back yourself out because it's uncomfortable making, taking those next steps. And that's the thing is that the more familiar you get with, you know, the more comfortable you get with stepping out of your comfort zone, the more you're like, okay, I thought that was really scary, but actually, do you know what? It was totally fine. And here I am, it all worked out. What's the worst that can happen? If you approach a shop and they say, no, so what? Doesn't matter, approach the next one. So built up this business, it was going really well. But what I hadn't done in the beginning was to really think about the trajectory and the future of that business and how that I could actually sustainably continue with that. Because it got to the stage where I was selling so much and I couldn't go to the shops anymore frequently because they didn't have any new stuff. So then I got to the point where I was like, well, I've created this whole brand around like ethical uh, clothing and recycling and that was my whole brand ethos and everything about my values that I believed in then it kind of had a cap to it and a ceiling to it so I was like what do I do now like I don't know how to get more clothing and I think I could have probably to be honest gone down researching like bulk you know bulk clothing drops from like foreign countries and stuff like that or like help getting someone to help me like drive around like to a wider circle of clothing, like secondhand shops. But that was the point where I actually managed to get a ticket to go to um, Europe and the UK. And so it was at that kind of turning point. But before I went there, I decided to create one dress from actual like new clothing. So my friend, Karen, who, <laughs> who was running the jewelry business, helped me create a pattern and I 
yeah, I've created this dress out of this fabric that was new, but it just really didn't sit well with me. So I created that dress, sold a couple of them, but it kind of didn't really gel with the ethos of my brand. So I didn't really feel comfortable with it. Anyway, that's where the point when I went to the UK, went to Europe and never went home again. <laughs> Oopsie. Um, but then I tried to like restart that business when I was in the UK, but the market was totally different. People could buy very affordable, really nice clothes already. Like there just wasn't a space for it. And the clothes that I could, would be buying from the secondhand shops were already quite expensive. So it just didn't make sense for me to do that. So that's where doing your research and really thinking about your specific setup, your specific market is really important because it's not like you can just copy paste the exact same thing to different places. So you need to see where like the gap in the market is. And I think that's what I kind of realized through trial and error with that clothing business. Anyway, turns out I ended up finding a jewelry class and doing a jewelry lesson and absolutely loving it. So then I ended up going down the jewelry route and creating a jewelry business. But even during that process, then Emil, my now fiance and I, um, he was very inspired by the fact that I was running my own jewelry business. And so I, uh, he was like, I want to also have my own business. And he tried a couple of different things in the past, like selling water bottles and uh, I think he tried some printing on demand t-shirts as well. Or was that only afterwards? I think that might have been afterwards actually. So then we set up a climbing brand for climbers because he had been a climbing instructor for three years before that. And uh, yes, yeah, so we set that up. He got some ambassadors. We you know, created this whole brand thing and I helped draw designs for the t-shirts and did all of that and it was really fun but at the end of the day his heart wasn't in it and neither was mine like I was like just helping him so and yeah we built an Instagram account thing to like 8k followers but then somehow I got locked out and banned for some reason I have no idea why Instagram can be a little bit scary sometimes um, but then that kind of was just like the nail in the coffin of being like, okay, I'm done with this. And the reason that setback stopped him was because he didn't really feel passionate enough to like overcome those setbacks. So that's where I'm always like, it's so important to know why you're doing it and to be really like excited and like, no matter what happens along the way, you're going to get through those things. So that's been the case for me with my jewelry business. Cause Lord knows over the past 10 years, definitely have come across obstacles and setbacks and all of that along the way and that's totally normal that's business and that's kind of like the premise of why i'm walking through all of these different businesses that i've had in the past to help you see that maybe that's not the right path for you and that's you know that's okay like try explore and see what really excites you and what you're really passionate about because then you'll be able to get through all of those things so anyway, that was the end of the, the climbing brand. I'd say that one probably lasted about eight months or so. And, and then we started Plant Potters. So Plant Potters was another idea that we spontaneously had. Again, we were thinking about, okay, well, the climbing brand didn't work. Maybe we'll do something else. So we decided to create a business around plant related things. So because we were like, okay, well, I don't know enough about plants to be selling plants. Also, they can die and that's risky, but people love house plants. So that was the problem that we identified. So that's always really helpful is if you see a problem and then you can solve that problem for people. So house plants were just kicking off. So we were able to build an Instagram account. Again, first thing we rushed to go and do, create an Instagram account around uh, house plants. So I was the one who curated the feed and helped him, you know, post all the pictures. And at that stage, reposting content, reels weren't a thing yet, reposting other people's content was great because you gave them a shout out. And if it was already going really viral, then you kind of like had that added virality added to yours. So we were able to grow that Instagram account to 220,000 followers in a year and a half. And yeah like pretty much everything we posted went pretty viral and yeah we managed to through that instagram platform we're able to get loads and loads of customers we we're also running paid ads at the time for that so instagram meta facebook ads 
and we grew that business to we think we made in the end like 95 or 100 around about 100k um, pounds in that obviously there was a cost to it and the way that the business was set up was that we were doing drop shipping so you may have heard of drop shipping where basically you're the third party so you source the products from china and then you want a website and you process the whole payment the purchase and all of that and you deal with the customer and then they send it directly to the customer so this was really just like a let's try something for fun didn't expect it to blow up as much as it did people were obsessed but because we were what we were selling was like ceramic plant parts and propagation stations with these little like glass bulb things with a little wooden frame they were very cute but then things would sometimes arrive broken and then customers were not happy and it wasn't expecting it neither of us were expecting it to do so well and neither of us really felt comfortable to be the face of the brand because the whole drop shipping idea really doesn't gel with me and yeah what basically also killed it was the fact that covid happened in china before we even heard of what covid was so it was around december december i remember being at emil's parents house in belgium and yeah, we'd gone over there for, to celebrate Christmas and we were stressed out of our minds because we were there busy responding to loads and loads of angry customers who were like, where's my order? Where's my order? Is it going to arrive for Christmas? It's a present. And they were like, you know, customers can just be super rude. Like, it's kind of like they think you like Amazon and they're just like, where's my order? I want it tomorrow. But because it was coming all the way from China and shipping to wherever they were around the world, it just wasn't fast. And that became like a big issue because then what happened was that the Facebook ads themselves became more expensive because we were getting bad rep basically because people were like putting negative reviews and stuff. And then like the price for the ads just went up and the customer satisfaction went down because of COVID, nobody knew what it was. Um, Cause before that point it was doing really well. Everyone was really happy, people were reposting and it was, it was good. Um, but because our heart wasn't in it and just the idea of actually how big this had grown and not actually feeling comfortable with this whole idea of dropshipping, we decided to stop it. It just wasn't right for us. So we dropped that one and yeah, because when we moved to Belgium, then I, cause I've been running my jewelry business in the UK uh, for like about that point like seven eight years i'm not very good with timelines guys sorry around seven eight years and then moved to belgium and the idea was to then continue with my jewelry business and expand into the belgian market over there but then we didn't realize that belgium has some very outdated <laughs> systems and i wasn't able to be officially legal for the first year that i was there we only stayed there a year and a half um, and that meant that I couldn't also buy silver and gold. So I had to get everything from the UK, but with Brexit being a real issue, things just took really, really long, were really expensive. Yeah, my like loyal customers in the UK were just not having a great experience and I was just, like devastating to me. So I decided to just pause my jewelry business and set up the coaching business at that stage because I knew how to set up a jewelry business. I know what it takes to run it and yeah, I've been doing that uh, for like seven, eight years and yeah, I got my business to do really, really well in the UK. But then we made a strategic decision to kind of refocus some of that energy uh, while that whole like registration process was happening in Belgium to the coaching business. And that's where we had a lot to learn as well, like so, so, so much to learn with coaching because I've been a teacher at a school for uh seven years and so i kind of knew how to teach but then applying that fully to an online space was a whole different kettle of fish basically so i had to learn so much stuff with that but i loved every step of it because i realized that coaching is my ikigai i don't know if you guys have heard of ikigai but it's basically like a japanese term for i'm probably gonna not explain this correctly but basically something you're passionate about something you're good at and something you can make money from and where those three things overlap it creates like a little triangle in the middle of whatever that thing is 
that's the thing that you will be super happy doing. And for me, that is actually coaching jewelry. So I love jewelry making, I'm good at it, but I also love teaching it and I'm passionate about it. And oh, that was the other thing as well. You can make money from it as well. So that's kind of like what led me to coaching because I used to teach making classes before COVID happened. And then COVID happened and I was like, you know what, actually, it's not so much the making that people struggle with because so many people are so talented and know how to make incredible jewelry. But the question is more, what do you do with that afterwards? So that's where I decided, well, actually, people really struggle with setting everything up. So all my friends were like, hey, like classmates that I had studied with, like, hey, how do, you, how do you create your website? Like, how do you launch a collection? Like, you know, asking me questions and people on Instagram as well, like, hey, how did you do that? Blah, 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 you know, like reaching out to me. So then I decided to do a bunch of one-to-ones. So I did one-to-one -one for a year and helped jewelers set, them, set up their businesses, create their websites, build their branding, identify the target audience, all, all that fun stuff, which I love, <laughs> but can seem rather daunting and took me personally a really long time to get to that point where I knew what I was doing and what all of the essential elements were to build a business. Because in the beginning, I didn't know, like, target audience, sure, women aged 30 to 50 who likes handmade jewelry has extra money to spend. When I realized every single jeweler has that same target audience, I was like, hmm, maybe I need to niche down a little bit more. Uh, but anyway, I can talk about niching in another whole video because that's another whole story. <laughs> I could go on for days about that. But yeah, but that led me to where I am now with running my own jewelry business and coaching. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting and, you know, taking you along my journey along creating businesses and failing and learning and reassessing. And hopefully that gives you some confidence in your own abilities as well to know that if you fail, it's okay. It's part of business. The only reason that someone fails is because they, like a failure is a first attempt at learning. That's how I see a failure. But successful people aren't successful because they didn't come across setbacks. They're successful because they succeeded despite of the setbacks. But that's where knowing your why and being super sure that that is something you're really, really passionate about. Never mind the setbacks. You'll get through them all. You'll have that energy and that feel to get through. So anyway, thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for sticking around to this point if you did. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video.